This here is a homemade chronograph, and this device is used to measure the muzzle speed, which basically is the speed of bullets. Because if you remember, a few weeks ago I've made my own coil gun, which by the way was very powerful, and I recommend you to watch that video. I'll place a card somewhere here, and also the link for that video below in the description. Anyway, if I want to know the speed of that metal projectile, I need such project, because basically, this device will measure the time between the input and the output of the bullet, and give us the time in meters per second. It's a very easy project, but I hope that you learned something new. I want to show you what you need to make this, the code, the schematic as always, how to assemble everything, and then we'll test it out and see if it works. So guys, let's get started! Your projects will be a lot better if you use the services from PCBWay for prototyping boards, for soldering your components with the SMD assembly service, or the steel SMD stencil for soldering the components yourself. Or maybe you want to try their flexible PCBs, or the new services with 10% discount for CNC machining or 3D printing, together with laser metal cutter and bending, and also mold injection parts. I've just received my PCBs from PCBWay and they look amazing especially with this new purple color that I've tried, but you can select any other color from this list. They have a very fast production time, so you can have your boards in less than 10 days, and the best of all, starting from only $5. What's up my friends, welcome back. So here I have a laser module, and these here are some light sensors, so called LDRs, or light dependent resistors. I mount this on my breadboard with a pull-down resistor in a voltage divider configuration. And as you can see on the oscilloscope, when the laser light touches the detector, it will change its value, and so the voltage output will also change. So every time I cut off the pass of the light, the output will change, and we can detect that voltage change with an Arduino for example. But instead of the voltage divider, we can use these modules that already have a digital output, high or low. So my first idea went like this. We would have a pair of a laser and an LDR sensor at the input, and another pair at the output. When the bullet passes, it will cut the pass of the light, so we can start a counter. And when the bullet reaches the output, we stop that counter and calculate the speed. And that sounds pretty easy, right? But the laser light is very narrow, so the bullet might not pass exactly in front of the light. That's why I wanted to use two pieces of mirrors face to face. So the laser will start at the bottom corner and it will go back and forth, creating some sort of light wall. In this way we make sure that the bullet will be detected on any point. So for that I've 3D printed this support that will carry the mirrors, the laser module and the light detector on top. But this method doesn't work because after some tests, I realized that the laser power was getting lost on each refraction and the angle was too big, so it looks like the mirrors are absorbing the light too much. So I had to try another option. I've soldered a few LDRs on a small PCB in straight line, side by side. And then I've connected them in series. Then I connect them to the module before. Have in mind that this has a small comparator, and we can set the threshold using the potentiometer. So I glue this series of resistors on the 3D support that I've used before for this project. I also glue in place the comparator module, and I add three wires for supply and the digital output. Then I take the laser module and remove the focusing lens. So that will create a bigger line of light, and like that I will be able to cover all the LDRs. So I glue the laser in front of the LDRs on the other side of the 3D printed support. And as you can see, now I could easily create a shadow over the light sensors. So turn on the laser and the LDR module. Then you rotate the potentiometer till you can see that the output LED is turning on, and that's the perfect point. So now as you can see I can detect any obstacle. Even the screwdriver is detected, and this is even thinner than the bullet that I used with my coil gun, so now we are good to go. We have to make two parts like this one. 
and by the way you print the support with PLA material, 20% infill and 2 perimeters. Also print the rest of the parts for the case. Ok, so now we have both the input and the output and we place them together on another 3D printed support and they should go something like this. And inside this case we will have all the electronics. I want to make this project based on batteries. So for that I will use a battery like this one together with a charging module with a USB connector like this one here that I always use. We also need an Arduino, a buzzer and some sort of display. I want to use this kind of 7 segment display for this one since we only need to show numbers for the speed. It's very easy to use with a serial communication. I also want to add a push button in order to have some sort of control and that's it. This is all that we need. And this is the schematic for this project. Just the sensors connected to the Arduino, the battery for the supply and the display to show the speed. I first solder the charger to the battery. And then between the battery and the circuit I add a switch so we could turn the entire circuit on and off. The switch will power the Arduino which is connected to the sensors, the buzzer and the display. So now all the connections are made with some thin wires, so before we add this inside of the 3D printed case, we should give it a test. Download the code from below and upload it to the Arduino. The display will show a zero value. But now I pass my hand between the sensors and we get the speed value, which by the way is in meters per second. And this speed value will change each time that we pass something between the sensors. And it will stay like that till we press the push button in order to reset the speed meter. And that's basically how this works. And if we take a look at the code we can see that we have the sensor pins defined on 8 and pin 9. So using interruptions we detect when the first sensor is triggered and then we save the time value. Then we detect the second sensor, and we equal the time to the difference between the actual time and the previous time. And that will be in microseconds, so we divide it by 1 million to get seconds. Then we divide the distance between the sensors by that value. And by the way, you should manually measure the distance between the sensors with a ruler. And then you get here in the code and change that value according to your distance. So we get the speed and divide that into digits, and print those to the 7 segment display. And that's it for the code. So now we can close the case. I glue the USB charger in front of this hole of the 3D printed case so we could recharge the battery. I also glue that battery and the Arduino inside of the case. The display and the push button will go on this 3D printed part. And then this part will get snapped in place over the other case and that's it. The main switch can be placed on the side of the case. I add a 3D printed leg on top and screw it in place. At the same time I also screw in place the two supports with the sensors. So now we should have a working bullet speed meter. Also make sure that you adjust the sensors again with the potentiometers. So now let's test it with my coal gun from the other project. I pour it on and charge the capacitors to above 400 volts. Make sure that the meter is reset and fire the bullet. Amazing! I get a speed of 128 meters per second. I reset the meter and fire it again, but this time I charge the capacitors a little bit more. And this time I get 139 meters per second, and that's amazing, because have in mind that the average speed of firearms bullets can go between 120 meters per second for an old musket, up to 1200 meters per second for nowadays rifles. So the speed of my coal gun is far from those, but even so it's quite dangerous, and it could harm you so be careful if you want to make the same project. Let's make another test.
So guys, this was a simple project. You have multiple ways to make this. But you have my circuit, the path list and the 3D printed files and my code below in the description in case that you want to make this same project. I hope that you have learned something new and if so, consider giving me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, did you like this video? I hope so. Ok, so look, I would really like to thank you to all of you for the support, especially for those who are supporting me on Patreon because that's a really nice thing to do. And if you can support me on Patreon, well, all you can do is to just like my videos or comment below in order to get more activity on YouTube, that will really help me. And if not, you have all my links below for my shop, for my website, if you want to buy my t-shirts and so on. So thanks again and see you in the next video.